Hello, welcome to Meet Your District Supervisor. I'm Nona Melkonian, and we're here in the board chamber with Supervisor Norman Yee from District 7, which includes the Twin Peaks, West Portal, St. Francis Wood, and Monterey Heights neighborhoods. Supervisor Yee is one of two new supervisors elected in 2012. Today we'll get to know him and talk about the toughest issues facing the city. Welcome, Supervisor. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm glad to be here, Nona. Great. Let's start with talking a bit about your background. Sure. Where you grew up, went to school, and the kind of jobs you've had in the past. I'm native San Franciscan. I was born uh, here in San Francisco, and I grew up in the Chinatown North Beach area on Vallejo Street. And I basically went to the uh, public schools around there, Gene Parker, and then Francisco, and then Galileo. So, Pretty much as I lived in that area until I was an adult. And from there, um, I went to City College, then I went to Cal and um, received my bachelor's in, in civil engineer and worked as an engineer for about six months before I really made the decision that uh, that was not where my passion was. Um, and I decided to go back, uh, leave the job and go back to school, got my master's and in education and never turn back. Um, that's what I've been doing pretty much m most of my life, either being in a classroom or working on in organizations that uh, would be focused on children and families. So that's sort of a little bit of, about my background. Born and raised San Franciscan, good for you. I am. <laughs> Why did you choose to stay in the city? It's hard for one to leave the city. I'm, I just love the city. Um, I'm very passionate about um, what goes on in the city and and maybe I f found my niche early on when I made the decision to actually focus on children and families and I, I keep on asking the same question when I was younger why 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 would I want to focus my efforts here in San Francisco are there other places in the world where maybe I can make a bigger difference and then I looked at and at the time, this is what I'm talking about, the late 60s and 70s. And there were, at that time, a really a large stock of uh, immigrant population coming in from China because the uh, immigration opened up around that time. And it, it was just an, an um, opportunity for me to, to help people that were struggling uh, in assimilating and getting used to things over here. And what motivated you to get involved in politics? Part of... Um, my motivation is not so much, I guess you have to really look, look at uh, where I started. And as I mentioned earlier, my focus and what I really wanted to do was help people. Um, my focus at the time was children and family. And after many, many years uh, of serving people, I realized in providing services that, that somehow I had to impact the decision makers. So I started advocating also on issues that I cared about. And at some point in my life, I, I, I realized I was being somewhat effective and, and that it wouldn't be nice if I were able to do something different. Now I was running an organization for 20 years and um, I felt like I, was, I needed to grow as much as, um, as, much as um, what impact I had. So, so I made the decision to leave the organization and ask myself, now what? And, and I try to look at other venues or other job situations to see if I could actually make a bigger impact. And that's when the opportunity of being running for the school board uh, came up and people just said, you know, it's so, such a natural thing. You've been involved with these issues and being in the classroom and being, you know, uh, one that grew up in public schools with, uh, and also having two daughters that went through the public school system. You're, it seems like a natural thing for you to um, get engaged with. So that's when I made the decision to jump into, you know, truly jump into being an, an elected official. Well, you mentioned that um, you have experience working with children mm -hmm. and you also worked on um, the school board. Mm -hmm. How has that experience prepared you for the Board of Supervisors? I think there's, there's a couple of things that prepare me to be uh, on the Board of Supervisors. Um, number one, I was not only came through the ranks uh, working with children and families, First as a volunteer, then as a youth director, then uh, you know tutoring, and eventually you run your orga organization, and you kind of understand the in and outs of every level, including administration, where you have to make hard decisions. Uh, 
especially when you're faced with cuts, what do you cut? Mm -hmm. How do you uh, handle the cuts? Right. Um, and, and when you're in better years, mm -hmm. you know, uh, when you get some extra funding, what do you do with extra funding? How, how can you use that funding effectively? So those type of um, opportunities to, to learn from that help me be on the school board because mm. it's almost the same issues where uh, for the eight years I was, was on the school board, almost every year we had to talk about cutting uh, because of state funding. Yeah. And, and so it, it's, it's, again, it grew m my experience in terms of how do you handle this? How do you work with uh, the community to make these decisions? And then once you make these decisions, how do you, how do you actually um, articulate them so that people understand why you're doing that? I think those types of um, experiences lend itself real well with the Board of Supervisors. Well, we're going to talk about the budget in a minute, oh, but before good. we do, um, I wanted to know, um, what did you learn from campaigning for supervisor? I know you've campaigned several times for the school board, mm -hmm. but how is this different? Well, I, it was really interesting for me to see the difference, Ashley, because uh, uh, on the school board, you have to campaign citywide, mm -hmm. and, and the, the, the issues are a little more focused. Um, and and when you do citywide, um, you could talk about all the issues, and everybody cares about the pretty much the same things. Uh, campaigning for board of supervisors is, is uh, you almost have to do it at two levels. One is that you need to focus on the district issues. At the same time, there's a lot of special interest groups that are not as focused on on the district issues, and more focused on citywide issues. And yet, so you have this tension of, of how, how do you balance that so that uh, you, it makes sense to people that care about citywide issues and it also makes sense for people that uh, are focused on, on district issues. And so I, I made the decision, I said, well, citywide issues are always gonna be there. And, but if I'm gonna represent this, this district, I'm gonna run on issues that they care about. So one of the things I, I learned from running on the school board is you listen to people. So it was early on that I made a decision to probably a year out, start knocking on doors and asking people, you know, uh, I'm running for supervisor and I'd like to hear what your issues are. Uh, and it was really difficult to do that after a while because people would say, what's your platform? I said, well, I don't have a platform right now. I want to listen to people before uh, my platform platform should reflect what you want me to work on. So that's what, uh, that's what I learned. And you mentioned that city issues are sometimes different than district issues. Mm -hmm. What do you feel are some of the biggest issues facing the city right now? Well, there, there are many issues. Um, um, one of the nice things is that the economy in, in San Francisco is, um, is improving a lot. And, and, and to be truthful, we, we didn't take a, a big hit like um, the rest of the country um, and I just look at some stats today and the unemployment rates uh, were, were improving uh, by um, wider margins than, than California itself and certainly uh, the country. So one of the things is you know, how, how the issues here is that how, how do we sustain you know, that growth so that so everybody could prosper. And, and basically, how do we balance that so that everybody prospers? You know, it's not, it shouldn't be, be just for the um, Wall Street uh, folks, but you know, it should be for the mainstream. Yeah, it So be. That's, that's one of the things that um, I think is always a challenge in the city to make sure that uh, prosperity is shared by all. So let's talk a little about the budget. Mm -hmm. The city just enacted a two-year budget. Right. And it seems like San Francisco is always faced with complicated budget decisions, including where to make cuts and whether or not to increase fees and taxes. How will you approach these difficult choices? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I, I'd like to say that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, when I was uh, the executive director of an organization and being on a school board, and um, being on the budget committee for all, all eight years and chairing most of them, uh, you have to make those tough choices. And one of the things I, I learned from being a, an administrator is that I do not, um, my values would be that we don't spend more than what we have and that if we don't have enough, 
there's two things you could do. You could either cut things mm -hmm. totally, or you look for more revenues. For me, it's um, I would I'm I would be taking the same approach. How do we generate more revenues for the, for the, the services that that the city needs, and and that if we need to cut, if we don't have the revenues, then where do we cut? There's going to be some basic things that I, I value. I, I truly believe that we need to protect the safety net for people that are most vulnerable yeah. in the city. Um, that's my value. Uh, education issues uh, would be very high in my priority, uh, in particularly early education and child care. Um, uh, those, those services for zero to five, not, it's, it's, it's a benefit for not only the young but also for the working parents. You mentioned various needs for the people that are vulnerable in the city. Mm -hmm. What do you feel about the city's housing needs and what do you think the Board of Supervisors should do to address these needs? The housing needs of San Francisco is going to continue growing. And one of the things that we're challenged with is where do you make that growth? And um, in District 7, for instance, uh, if you tie it back into my district, there's a tendency for anywhere to say, yes, we, we understand we need growth, and, but uh, don't change my neighborhood and, and maybe have to grow somewhere else. I'm sorry. Um, for me, I, I feel like every, everywhere in San Francisco need to be a part of the solution and that uh, if there's opportunity to, to provide some growth in the housing, then we should do that. Um, th there's always going to be tension of, well, no, but please don't do it here. And, and, and I, I'm very sensitive to that. And I'll listen to neighbors and say, well, is, that, is this too much, too little? Uh, how do I adjust? And, and, and still be part of the solution. So part of it is, is that you allow for some growth and you have to be real uh, smart about how you do this. How do you work with the community? And it's real important for me that any type of development would work with the community to ask them, you know, this is what we're, we're, we're um, envisioning. What do you think about it? How can we work with you to make this happen? Uh, what adjustments do we need to make? And I've seen that happen very successfully in recent times at, on Ocean Avenue, for instance. Uh, they built um, uh, a supermarket there with, um, uh, with the uh, condos and apartments up there. And, and by the time they broke ground, the community, they, were, they went through a process where the community um, was pretty satisfied. And it, was, it wasn't a huge development, but it was pretty large for that area. So, um, and I, I really supported uh, last year's Proposition C, I believe. Uh, in which um, we were going to be able to provide more revenues for affordable housing. So that's part of the solution. Can, can we continue to do that or not? Can we make sure that there's a diverse um, housing stock in San Francisco so that we really uh, want to keep that diversity here? It's, um, most people, almost everybody I've spoken to, I don't care where you are on the economic spectrum, people want a diverse uh, uh, a society in San Francisco. So in order to do, the, do that, it's not just about market rates, it's about uh, affordable housing also. Okay. And speaking of housing, what are your thoughts on the plans for Park Merced? During the campaign, uh, there were a lot of discussions around that. And I, I could have gotten engaged with a uh, hypothetical uh, discussion, and I chose not to. And, and the residents out there understood um, my rationale for that. I said, look, you know, there's been some agreement uh, on this. There's also a lawsuit uh, that's uh, pending. Um, and, and so let's play that out because I, I have no influence over, you know, any decisions that were made and any lawsuit that uh, 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 the court is hearing. So my commitment to, to um, the residents out there is I looked at the, um, the agreement and there were um, some promises there for existing um, or current um, residents. And, I, and I'm, I, I basically said my commitment is that I would do anything, everything I, in my power to make sure those commitments are met. And then I think they were, they could have been skeptical. Uh, I'm, I'm sure some people are, but the majority of people out there, um, I guess, believed in what I said because I also pointed out to them how um, there's a, actually a Montessori school out there 
that's been um, uh, been asked to leave several times over the last two decades, and each time I've stepped in uh, and worked in partnership with the the, um, the school itself and to help us stay there. So, and and that example was very powerful for the residents there. Yeah. You mentioned a little about your district. Mm -hmm. What do you feel are some other issues that are facing your district right now? It's kind of interesting to me. There's probably going to be many, many, many issues. But um, when I look back at what I did in terms of running, what my platform uh, was about, it was about eventually when I heard enough people um, tell me their concerns universally, um, people really do care about pedestrian safety and safety in general. Right. Um, but the, the, there's, there, of course, there's crime. There's crime all over the place. But the major thing that's happening out there is pedestrian safety. Another issue that, that I chose to focus on um, would be a, to help, as much as possible, small businesses in the neighborhoods. Um, so I, I, I define it as in the neighborhoods because sometimes when we call, talk about small businesses um, and we're talking about 100 employees or less, that's not usually a neighborhood business. So for pedestrian safety, um, I, the first, uh, first thing I did, the first meeting I asked for a hearing on pedestrian safety for District 7, and it was very timely. Um, and it's really unfortunate that I have to say this, but in the seven death uh, fatalities in San Francisco, uh, so far this year, three of them were in District 7. So, so I, I feel like the timing was right to talk about it. What are we gonna do about these things? What are some of the solutions? Um, and when we had the hearing, we had 30, 40 people uh, from the uh, District 7 come out to testify. So they do care about these things. And, and, and I told people, I'm very committed to this. It's not a hearing for show. It's a hearing to get something done, so. What else do you hear from your constituents about the transportation situation and how is parking mm -hmm. and traffic? The vast majority of people in District 7, for instance, um, are against the meters. Mm. Um, in terms of um, having it operate on Sundays and, and uh, increasing the rates. So if, if I had the power, I would probably turn it back, but I, you know, that's not under my jurisdiction. Uh, it's not under the Board of Supervisors uh, jurisdiction. And some of the Sunday issues, um, well, I, 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 right now there's a lot of confusion for people, like, well, what went to pay on Sunday? We've never done that. Um, there's other places where I've gone where Sunday, you know, you have to, you pay. So part of it, um, I'm glad that at least MTA backed off of um, having Sunday in the morning and doesn't start until 12 so that, uh, in particular, the churchgoers uh, will not have to worry about it. So that's, that's part of it. And of course, there's, you know, um, in terms of public transportation, it's a problem out there. You would never think that. Uh, if you don't live out there, but because you're out there yeah. and there's so many hills, uh, the issues are very, a little bit different where if you take away uh, a bus stop that's three blocks away, you're talking about a 15% incline or something where you have to walk up the hill or something. And if you're, if you're either, uh, uh, um, if you have issues with you know, being on a wheelchair or if you're 70 years old, you know, those three blocks are gonna be a lot. And, and there's also the issue of, well, the Muni is great up to West Porto. They all go out there and then they shoot off in their, in their own direction. Mm -hmm. But if you live out by Park Merced, for instance, the M line, for instance, yeah. is, is, is a major complaint of my district where, oh my God, uh, one of my staff went out there for a meeting, for instance, uh, in the evening. Mm. And when he came out in the evening, he had to, and this was not I mean late evening, this was early evening, he had to wait 67 minutes oh, wow, for the that's M wow. line to get, take him back uh, down, downtown. So that's an issue for me. And so there could be more muni service. There could be more muni service, uh, and you know how we get them through the 19th Avenue corridor is a big concern. Uh, I, I stood out there many mornings and many late afternoons um, on 19th and Holloway, and I saw hundreds of, of people, you know, just crossing the street from, from the bus stops. Let's talk about the city's economic development a little bit. Mm -hmm. Do you feel we're on the right track? Yes, 
I think we're on the right track. And again, uh, I just looked at some stats today in which uh, com relative to um, California and the United States, we're doing real well. Can we do better? Of course we could do better. Um, unemployment is down again, or is coming down. Uh, the, the number of jobs are going up. What I, what I would like us to, you know, we've had a, um, a major focus on the, uh, the tech industry and biotech and so forth. Um, and, we're, and we need to continue doing that. I also feel like it, if there's some opportunities for us to bring in, bring back some manufacturing jobs, you know, again, to, to keep the diversity of, of the type of people that we have here and the job opportunities, mm -hmm. I, I would really support that. What about the role of sports um, in the city's economic future? Are you supportive of the new Warriors Stadium? I've, you know, uh, for people that don't know this, the Warriors started in San Francisco. They played at the Civ uh, Civic Audit Auditorium or Bill Billy Graham Auditorium. And when it was there, I went to more games, of course. Uh, and, and I'm a former sort of basketball junkie. So I love basketball and I would love to see the Warriors uh, come back. I, if they'd come back and uh, wherever they come, you know, I, I, I'm, this definitely can be some economic benefits to, to them coming back to the city. To what degree do you feel the city should subsidize the team? When it comes to subsidies, and I'm not real clear how we would subsidize, whether uh, if, when people talk about subsidies, um, they have a range of ideas of what they think they're talking about. Um, if one of the game plans is for, for um, them to be at Pier 30 and 32, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, or the piers, in which it's not, not very functional right now, and we're not generating anything from, from those piers. And an idea, if, if they were to build there, that we would um, then provide some, um, some, some savings for them going down the road after they, they, they build it up and so forth um, to offset the, the cost of the rental. Uh, is that subsidies? Um, you could call that subsidies, but then again, would you have any revenues anyways because it's not doing anything right now? So one has to be real careful when you talk about subsidies, what it really means. Well, we're almost out of time, but before we go, are there any other issues um, that you'd like to discuss that we haven't had a chance to, or any other issues that you plan to concentrate on throughout your term as supervisor? Mm -hmm. Well, as I mentioned, um, for this year and um, probably into early next year, my concentration is on pedestrian safety. Not, I, I'm hoping that I could take the process that I'm developing for District 7 into uh, the citywide um, uh, process. And again, you know, anywhere I can help with small businesses because I know they're the driving engine in San Francisco, that's what I'll be focusing on. Great, and we'll be mm -hmm. looking forward to knowing what happens. Alrighty. Well, it looks like we're out of time. Thank you so much for joining us today on SFGov TV's Meet Your District Supervisor. Thank you, Nona. Thank you. We've been talking to Supervisor Norman Yee from District 7. Watch for the next episode of Meet Your District Supervisor when we'll be back with another one of our 11 city supervisors. For SFGov TV, I'm Nona Melkonian.